Greetings and welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today we're going to talk about the five fastest ways to get Arch Linux up and running on your computer. So stay tuned. So before we dive into our topic of getting Arch Linux up and running, we might want to ask this fundamental question, why do I want to get Arch Linux up and running on my system quickly? Well, there's a lot of very good and very compelling reasons to use Arch. You might need the latest software. You might be running some of the latest hardware. You might just want to have a new experience to learn how to use Arch Linux, which will make you a more rounded Linux user overall. So today I want to talk about the five different ways that I have found are the best to install Arch. And these are boiled down to what I consider right now in the end of 2020 to be the best ways to install Arch Linux. Don't be concerned when I say 2020. I know we got the crazy election and riots going all over and a coronavirus and the end of the world and multiple hurricanes and whatever. Hey, let's just settle down and have some Arch. Now, first and foremost, one of the things that we oftentimes think of when we see Arch is we think an elitist group. And I assure you, not every Arch user is elitist. I know you get the people that say, RTFM, RTFM. You know, I said, read the instructions. They're in Italian. I mean, how many of us have tried? It's like it's a different language sometimes. All right. The other factors you might hear is, I, he I use Arch, by the way. You know, you get hit this one out there too. And a lot of that's just become a meme in the Arch world. Don't be too intimidated. After running Arch for a year alongside of Linux Mint for a year, I really like them both equally. And I have very good compelling reasons to want to use Arch. Mostly I use Arch so I can test out all the software that may be coming to my production computer very soon. And having a staging place to learn that new software in the latest and greatest versions is an excellent place to go. So now hopefully I've convinced you that it is actually important to use Arch a little bit. And if you have a spare computer laying around, you're like, which distro to use? Hopefully you might take one of those and throw some version of Arch onto it. Now I've picked these out and I put these down in order from kind of the easiest down to maybe the most pure versions of Arch. So some of these are just based on Arch. Some of these are pure Arch, and we're gonna go ahead and dive on in. The very first one we're gonna talk about is Endeavor OS. Now Endeavor OS is one of my latest favorite ways to install Arch. The reason is it is so good out of the box. It has, you download the distro, it's got a simple, quick, offline installer from that download, which is gonna get you a very good XFCE, or if you choose the online option, you can install any desktop environment that you happen to want on your system. They also have extra tools to make some of the package cleanup and some of the things you might need to do in Arch, like managing your kernels and doing package cache cleanups. They make it very easy with simple tools inside of their newer versions. So Endeavor OS, if you wanna get something up and running that's not 100% pure Arch, but very close to it. It's easy to install, easy to work with. Endeavor OS is an excellent place to go. Number two is Arch Labs. This is the one I'm actually running on my system. Now, if I were to wipe that system and install Arch today, I might use a different option. But Arch Labs was the best I knew of at the time I put that computer together, which was going on two years now, and I've had like zero problems. Well, outside one or two things where I accidentally broke something, but hey, easy to get fixed. So Arch Labs is excellent. It is a easy terminal-based application. So if you're like, okay, I'm gonna jump on into the pool. I wanna see the terminal, but I don't wanna to be too scared. Arch Labs is a great place to go. It is more of a terminal based, but it does explain a lot of the steps and it makes it fairly easy. They also though don't have a million choices. So there's some things it just automatically sets up and configures for you without even asking, which decreases the time it takes to install it and 
makes your system definitely work more, especially if you do not understand all of the things that are under the hood. The questions are gonna ask you like, oh, what, what, what's the network stack? You know, stuff like that. It's gonna just go ahead and install that. You have your choice of kernels between the latest kernel, the LTS kernel. I'm not sure if the advanced hardware stack or, um, or uh, like the Zen kernels, I'm not sure if those are in there or not. Uh, but I know you can do the LTS, which is what I run, or you can do the latest kernel. You also have your choice of desktop environment. So no matter which way you want your computer to run, as far as the GUI is in concerned, you have that easy choice between, I think pretty much every major desktop environment is going to be on Arch Labs. Number three is going to be Manjaro Architect. I know it's not pure Arch, okay? But there's compelling reasons to run Manjaro. It's very close to Arch. They hold back a few packages so that they make sure that things are compatible. And for the most part, they do a really good job. The other thing I really like about Manjaro Architect is that it's the only one of these distros on this list that does extensive customization on the desktop environments and nearly every desktop environment. Manjaro is one of the absolutely most beautiful installed distributions out of the box. And the reason I pick Architect, it is it is a terminal base. It's not the very first easiest choice to install Manjaro, but it gives you out of one download, which is a fairly small download, it gives you every desktop environment and the choice of all those options. The networking stuff, do you need print servers? Pretty much everything. That's its term, architect. Manjaro Architects builds your system completely custom. Instead of being based on pure Arch, it's going to be based on Manjaro, which is a derivative of Arch. Overall, it is very good. If you are wanting a a good art system that's just gorgeous to look at right out of the box without having to fight with themes or anything like that. The Manjaro Architect option is probably your best bet because of the excellent theming that they have done. They also have, we talked about the, um, the package tools, the cache cleaning tools and things like that on Endeavor OS. Manjaro Architect also contains that and that they put Pomuk package with their system and with Pomuk on Manjaro, you can enable or disable snaps, enable or disable flat packs and do package cleanups and manage kernels. Actually kernels is not in Pomuk, but it is a separate tool in Manjaro. So it does have all of those features as well. So Manjaro Architect is another excellent choice if you are looking for something that looks best out of the box. Number four is Arco Linux. This is an excellent Linux distribution which has a lot of options. Really my criticism of Arco Linux over the years has been that its website is completely disorganized. And a lot of the reason for this is because they have a lot of different missions involved. They have everything from the very beginner, this is my very first time installing Arch, let's download this one package, we're gonna get an XFCE build, it's going to work very well out of the box. But they also have them on the opposite extreme, they have packages that are designed to teach you what Arch Linux is and how it works. And so for this, I can't fault their disorganization because they are tackling a very, very large project. Namely, we want a good Arch system up, but we want to give you the ability to learn how to use Arch while we are going. They have many options from the very simple, here we're going to choose your desktop environment, to the next step up, you can choose your desktop environment, to a next step up, much like Manjaro Architect, hey, you're on your own, here's some documentation. So go ahead and RTFM, right? They do have excellent options inside of Arco Linux. Every option is available depending on which one of the versions you're using. And this is part of the confusion. Do you want D or do you want B or which version of this do you want to download? I, this is the one I'm absolutely, you're going to need to go and read their website to see which one you want. But ultimately, it is an excellent choice. Before we get into our final Arch installer here. I want to take some time to say you can help support this channel over on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Tom M, T O M M, or we are on Subscribestar, subscribestar.com slash switched to Linux, or you can find me on my conglomerate group, thinklifemedia.com. So thanks for supporting the channel if you like this work. And anybody on the supporters list, you can join in on our Thursday discussion streams. And I will give priority to if you are requesting videos, I will give those types of priorities and some other factors as well. So let's go ahead and move on into our number five. 
And our last choice is ArchFi. The reason I like ArchFi is this is going to get you pretty much pure Linux. What they have done is they've taken that entire Linux manual that you're supposed to be reading and they have developed a script out of it. So you don't even download a separate distro. You download the original pure Arch. You boot that guy up on your machine and then you connect to the internet and then you go and you download the ArchFi script and you run the ArchFi script and this is going to walk you through every step you're going to need to do to get Arch installed on your system. You're going to end with something that is basically pure Arch as if you have gone through and installed it yourself. It does take the longest to install and it is the most complicated of all these ones that we've done. But if you've been using Linux for a while and you're like, I want to dive into this, I want to figure this out, ArchFi is an excellent place because it's going to prompt you at each step. And if you want, just have a separate computer or a phone or something there and it props you up a question, just go on and get on an internet search. Please don't use Google. I like either StartPage or DuckDuckGo. Jump on one of those guys, say, what does this thing mean? And then you'll find a link to it in the manual. If there's one thing that Arch does really well, it is documenting things. Now, it may not always look English, but I assure you it is. And while there are indeed some pockets of the community that are not necessarily the most helpful, there are also a lot of pockets of the community that are extremely helpful. So hopefully this has helped you to wet your feet, to dive in and get Arch installed on your system. And these will be the fastest ways ever. So thanks for watching. and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.